Meanwhile, this morning, they are icons of the American West and symbols of Texas culture and the Texas Rangers, obviously. Their story bringing in millions of people to the Texas Ranger Hall of Fame and Museum in Waco every year. 25 News reporter Garrett Hoddle here now with a look at what's new at the museum. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Joey. And it seems like when you talk to people, especially some of our coworkers that have been multiple <laughs> times, it yeah. seems like every time you go, something's new. But the museum has actually got 15 new items that belong to a collection of a legendary lawman, Manuel Trezazis Gonzalez, his nickname Lone Wolf. He was the first Hispanic captain of the modern Ranger troop and was such an incredible story. The family wanted to see his legacy preserved. It's a story you find here at the Texas Ranger Hall of Fame and Museum. Since the museum opened in 1968, we've had about four and a half million people that have come through the facility and literally from all over the world. For director Byron Johnson, this story, though, begins with a phone call from a gentleman by the name of Stanley White about the legendary Texas Ranger Manuel Trezazis Gonzalez. His family had been friends with Gonzalez for years, and he inherited a collection of Gonzalez's personal effects and equipment and materials and one incredible set of decorated Colt 1911 pistols. In discussing the collection of Gonzalez's items, what happened next on the phone call? Out of the blue, he surprised us and said that he wanted to donate them to the people of Texas so they belong to everyone in perpetuity. And now, 15 new items help tell the story of Lone Wolf's impressive career in law enforcement. From the files of the Texas Rangers come the these stories based on facts. Starting in the 1920s during Prohibition to defending the oil fields in East Texas and communities like Kilgore all the way living up to his nickname. He pursued things on his own. The name Lone Wolf was applied to him and it kind of stuck over the years. A lifetime of achievements with the Rangers. He introduced such things as modern fingerprint cataloging and analysis. And in the 1930s, when the legislator created the Department of Public Safety, Gonzalez was appointed superintendent of the Bureau of Intelligence. And under his supervision, the Texas Department of Public Safety Crime Lab became what is now one of the top ones in the United States. Even in retirement in the 1950s, Presenting Joel McRae in Tales of the Texas Rangers. He became a consultant to radio, television, and movies with 1950s television programs like Tales of the Texas Rangers. Captain Gonzalez, the lone wolf, first Hispanic captain of the modern Ranger troop, one of the last of the Roaring Twenties and Depression era, a star in law enforcement, and some would say in Hollywood, passed away in 1977. When this museum was founded, he was one of the last of the, you can say, old-time rangers alive to see that. Just long enough to see this special place, one already with a wealth of action and culture, but made more rich, preserving his memory, his life, his story. And after his death in 77, the rangers did elect him into the Texas Ranger Hall of Fame, which is a state memorial. Director Johnson reiterating he was a very consequential figure during what was a period of transition for the Rangers. He hopes folks come out to see this new collection. It's really going to be neat to go check that out, Garrett. Really cool. What else is going on there? Oh, well, one thing Director Johnson also mentioned, this was put on pause last year due to the pandemic, but they're having the Roundup event, which is on Saturday mm -hmm. from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And this is for the kiddos, so I know a lot of them are on spring break, and yeah. there's going to be reenactors out there of Texas Rangers. Sounds like a whole lot of fun, uh -huh. and we know there's always a story at the museum. Got to go check it out. Good to see. All right, Garrett, thank you for that.